Have you ever learned a guitar lesson in an extremely unexpected place? Well, I have. In fact, today I'm going to share with you five lessons that a baby taught me about guitar. Now, in two minutes, I want you to grab my guitar, bring it out to me, put it in my hands, and then step back. You play. Just bring me the guitar. Now, before we get into those five lessons, I want to make sure that we're on the same page. There's a brand new season of Acoustic Tuesday coming towards the middle slash end of October, and you might be wondering why. Well, the reason is actually laying on me right now. This is Emerson Towns, and he was born back on September 15th. And Whitney and I are taking this time to obviously be at home with him. I'm taking this time to uh, be at home and help Whitney out as much as I can with uh, this new little bundle of joy, this guitar geek in training. But uh, that's the reason why I've been shooting the Acoustic Tuesday show from home. But that's all going to come to an end here towards the end of October. I just wanted to remind you of that and again, make sure that we were on the same page. With all that being said, let me go ahead and let you know what this little fella taught me about guitar. As you could tell, I shot that intro right around 1.30 a.m. and my brain wasn't fully about me. I actually forgot to tell you another thing I'm gonna talk about today. You all keep asking me about my electric guitars and I do have some electric guitars and in fact, you've worn me down and I'm gonna share those with you today. Those are gonna come a little bit later but let me give you a sneak peek of the cases that I'll actually be showing you. Here they are and uh, we're gonna be going through each one of those just a little bit later. But for now, let's go ahead and dig into the five lessons that my baby taught me about guitar. Sometimes you stumble into guitar lessons in very unexpected places, and that's exactly what I want to share with you today. Five lessons that a baby taught me about my guitar journey, and I think you're going to find these applicable to your guitar journey as well. You know, when we first brought Emerson home, I thought I was going to be spending the majority of my time relearning how to change diapers, soothe an angry baby, and operate on a less than desirable amount of sleep, all of which I actually did end up relearning, but I digress. Uh, Emerson actually taught me a ton about my guitar journey, and I think you'll find these lessons quite impactful, especially the very last one I'm going to share with you because it has everything to do with your fulfillment with the acoustic guitar. But let's go ahead and dig into these lessons one by one. And the very first lesson that Emerson taught me is patience. Yes, of course you need patience when you're dealing with a baby because they can't tell you what they want. They might need a change, they might need to eat, they might need to go down for a nap, but you don't know that because they can't explain it to you. All they can do is cry and scream. So you need a lot of patience to deal with that, but it made me think about my guitar journey and your guitar journey as well, in that we need to integrate as much patience as possible in our guitar journey. I think a lot of times, we can get caught up in this trap of expectations in that, oh, I'm gonna sit down with a guitar for an hour, two hours, and I'm gonna learn this full song and it's gonna be amazing. And while I think a goal like that is really great and I, th I want you to shoot for the stars, I also want you to have the patience to know that it might take time. It might take five or six practice sessions to get a song under your fingers. It might take two or three weeks to get that song to a point to where you're comfortable playing it. And I want you to have the patience to know that and not get discouraged if it doesn't happen overnight. So yes, lesson number one is patience. Lesson number two has everything to do with being a baby and I didn't think it applied to my guitar journey, but lo and behold, it does. Lesson number two is rest. Yes, indeed. Uh, as a baby, of course, you're doing a lot of growing and you do a lot of resting. So that's important for a baby, but it's important for us guitar geeks as well because, well, we actually need time away from our guitar to progress. Let me explain. How often have you sat down for a good period of time and really, really worked on something and felt good about it? But the more you worked on it, the more mistakes started to creep in and then you started to get frustrated and then pretty soon you're wondering, wait, wait, did I even learn this thing? Why, I, I just knew it 10 minutes ago, but as I keep playing, I keep, well, making mistakes and goofing up. Well, fatigue can set in to your guitar playing, and this is exactly when you need a rest. When you find yourself feeling frustrated, when you find yourself growing impatient in your guitar journey and disgusted in what you're doing, 
take a break. It's okay to take a break. You're not admitting defeat. You're not saying, I give up. You're not waving the white flag. You're simply taking a break so you can revitalize and reinvigorate your energy when it comes to the guitar. It's absolutely necessary. In fact, some of my personal light bulb moments and realizations with the guitar have come without the guitar in my hand. And again, just because you don't have the guitar in your hand doesn't mean you can't think about it. But those rest periods are so important because without the guitar in your hand, it frees up your mind to, well, restore energy, but also think about the guitar in a completely different way. The next lesson I wanna share with you, and this is a big one, I have to consult my notes here, is uh, consistency. Now, consistency is vital to your guitar journey, but let's zoom into the baby world for a second. Consistency is what babies thrive on. Once you figure out their schedule, uh, you can kind of zone in on that schedule and be consistent. They like it as parents. We certainly like it as well because there's an element of predictability to it. And I think we all operate, Whitney, Emerson, and I operate at our best when we feel like, well, we know what we're getting into and there's a consistent element. The same exact thing is true for your guitar journey, specifically your guitar routine. A consistent guitar routine will yield consistent progress. It's as simple as that. If you spend time dedicating to your, dedicated to your playing habit, you will reap the benefits. Will they happen like a light switch? No. Will the floodgates open and all of a sudden all the guitar skills come into your fingers? No. But a consistent guitar routine over time will yield immense, immense benefit and incredible dividends. I want you to develop an unconscious practice habit, and this comes through consistency. Every day, at the same time, I want you to sit down with your guitar and put in your 10 minutes a day. If you do this consistently, you'll be amazed in even as little time, as, as little of time as a week at the progress you'll actually achieve if you spend 10 focused minutes a day consistently playing guitar. So yes, consistency is a huge one. On to our next lesson, and this one actually has to do with technique and, and playing the guitar, and it is dynamics. We get so tied up. When I say we, I'm lumping myself in because I find myself you know, falling victim to all the guitar geek pitfalls that you do. And a lot of times I find myself practicing, focused on the notes, focusing on, uh, focusing on finger placement, focusing on my rhythms, focusing on speed, tempo, uh, accuracy, finger strength, all these things. But you know the one thing that gets kicked to the curb a lot? Dynamics. Yes, dynamics. And let me explain how this manifests in the baby world and then we'll bring it to guitar. I practice a lot when Emerson sleeps. Uh, in fact, I oftentimes sit next to his crib and that's when I do my practice sessions because it's quiet in the house. Whitney's usually resting in the other room and I thought, well, this way I can hear Emerson and I'll be able to spend some quality time with him and I'll be able to, of course, play guitar as well. It's a win, 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 win. And the first time I did this was great. Emerson was soundly asleep and luckily enough, Emerson can sleep through pretty much anything. Coda can bark right outside his window and the kid doesn't even blink. But Whitney is a pretty light sleeper and she's sleeping in just the room over. So my first baby guitar practice session, well, it didn't go so well. It went okay for Emerson, but Whitney was very shortly at the door saying, hey, uh, I'm trying to sleep over here. I haven't gotten any sleep. Can you help? Can you help a girl out? To which I said, of course. And in my head, I was like, man, I really want to practice guitar. And then, I, and then it dawned on me. You can still practice guitar, just do so quietly. You know, you don't have to go 110% all the time you play guitar. In fact, you shouldn't go 110%. And I'm talking about volume here. Practicing dynamics is one of those under the radar things that if you start making a conscious effort to develop your dynamic range as a guitar player, and in a moment I'm gonna share a, an exercise with you that you can do right now that will help expand your dynamic range. If you can spend a conscious effort on your dynamics as a guitar player, you will be amazed at the impacts that it has in your playing. Now, the impacts it had in my playing really manifested themselves in, in family harmony. <laughs> Whitney could now sleep. I was practicing at a lower volume, and of course, I'm sure Emerson appreciated it as well, uh, because even though he can sleep through loud things, I don't think he necessarily wants to all the time. 
So yes, dynamics. Practicing your guitar quietly and loudly and in every way in between is vital to your progress as a guitar player. It's vital to the confidence you have in your instrument, your ability to play, and your ability to truly command the guitar. So let me go ahead and show you a quick exercise, something that I use to help rein in my dynamics, figure out how softly I can play, and figure out how loudly I can play, and of course, all the gradients in between. This is a super easy exercise. If you have your guitar, go ahead and grab it, and uh, we'll dig right in. Real quick, I wanna share this dynamic exercise with you, and there's actually two parts to it. There's the open string part and the fretted part. Let's go ahead and start with the open string. Now, what we're gonna be doing in both of these versions of the exercise is controlling our dynamic, meaning I want you to play really soft, and really loudly, and every gradient in between. So what we're gonna be doing is isolating the A string here, and we're gonna be just doing a steady down and up stroke on the A string, like so. Pretty simple, you don't even need your fretting hand. Now, I, what I want you to focus on is playing as softly as you possibly can, and then gradually increasing the volume to, uh, we'll say as, as loudly as you can. You don't have to go berserk on it, but just uh, definitely, I want you to notice the increase in volume and the control that you have over how loud the string is. So it'll sound something like this. Once you get to that loud volume, I want you to bring it back down. And then back up again. Seems pretty simple, and, and it is, but I, I really want you to feel the control you have over the volume. Oftentimes we get stuck in this very one-dimensional way of playing in terms of volume, but you have so much control and it has everything to do with you and your relationship to dynamics. Now let's go ahead and add a fretted element to this so we can kind of get control over both the picking hand and the fretting hand. So what I want you to do is we're gonna just be uh, replicating this pattern. It's gonna go open A string, second fret of the A, fourth fret of the A. And that's it, you're just gonna re be repeating those notes again with a steady down and up pick motion like so. Down, up, 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 down, up. Now, while you're doing that, I want you to do the same exact thing you did with the open string. Start very slowly, bring up the volume to your loudest playing, and then bring the volume back down again. So that'll sound something like this. it back up again. And then bring it down. What's nice about the fretted part is it almost gives you a way to partition your volume increase, meaning each sequence you can get just a little bit louder. And that's the beauty of the fretted portion. Either way, whatever version of this exercise you decide to do, or if you wanna come up with your own version, make sure the focus is on dynamics and how you control the volume of your guitar. Okay, we're getting geared up for the final lesson that Emerson taught me about guitar. In fact, this lesson has everything to do with my entire family and the level of fulfillment I get from the acoustic guitar. But let's just very quickly do a recap of the lessons that, well, a baby has taught us about guitar thus far. Uh, the first one is patience. You have to have patience in your guitar journey, just like you have patience with raising a child. The next one is rest. Babies need rest and guitar geeks need rest too. Time away from your guitar can be just as valuable as time spent with your guitar. And again, it's not admission of defeat. It's okay to take a break. It's actually much better to take a break and do things in smaller chunks. The next lesson is consistency, and this has everything to do with your guitar routine. I want you to be consistent because through a consistent and fun guitar routine, you'll actually reap tons of benefits in the realm of progress. And of course, well, babies need consistency too. We already talked about that. And that final lesson we talked about is dynamics. It's very important to integrate dynamic practice into your sessions.
I cannot stress this enough. This is something that gets, that gets left on the table all the time. And if you start paying attention to it, you'll be amazed at the tone you can pull out of your guitar and the overall well, way you can emote with your guitar. It's incredible. It's a game changer, I'm telling you. Practicing dynamics is incredible. And this brings me to, that, to the actual final lesson that I wanna share with you, and that is joy. Yes, joy. It's pretty simple. Joy. Emerson has taught me to experience joy while playing the guitar. In fact, Whitney has taught me how to experience joy when playing the guitar. In fact, my older son Aiden has taught me how to experience joy when it comes to music and guitar. So let me explain. You know, I can get caught up a lot with playing things perfect, playing things faster, having great tone, uh, playing things the right way, not making any mistakes, which is a, really a losing battle, if I'm honest. And nothing brought true importance more into perspective than playing songs for Emerson as he's sitting there sleeping or awake or when Whitney's feeding him or when Aiden, Whitney, and I are video chatting. Because no longer is it about playing things perfect. No longer is it about mistakes or how fast or slow you play anything or how clean your notes are or how awesome the tone is or even what guitar you're playing. The fact is you're playing guitar around the people you love and that experience brings out so much joy and so much fulfillment. There's nothing that can replace it, plain and simple. And I get this joy, again, like I said, playing for Emerson as he's laying in his crib, playing for you know Emerson and Whitney while, while Whitney's feeding him and Whitney's suggesting songs to play. Or when Aiden and I are, are texting passionately about heavy metal music and which bands are awesome and which bands we don't like and which bands we should check out and if he's heard any new music that I should check out and if I've heard any new music that he should check out. And this was just this last week that this kind of dawned on me and that, you know, of course I want you to have guitar goals. Of course I want you to strive to be the best you can at guitar. And I want you to have, you know, I want you to have effortless bar chords and I want you to be able to play things at a variety of tempos and I want you to be able to have a great song repertoire. But bottom line, what I most want for you to experience with the guitar is fulfillment and joy because that's what you got into guitar that's why you got into guitar in the first place. That's why I got into the guitar in the first place. I remember the first time I played something that sounded sensible on the instrument, the amount of joy and pride that I felt that I was responsible for making those noises. And that when I made those good sounding noises and somebody else heard them, it brought them joy and fulfillment as well. So that's the biggest lesson that a baby, my family, has taught me about guitar, is to always look for the joy in the instrument. Always look to be fulfilled by your guitar because that's one of the most important things you can do on your guitar journey. And if you can find that, your guitar journey, every single day will reward you with gifts after gifts after gifts of joy, happiness, fulfillment, and this overall feeling of contentment with the instrument. It's no longer about, am I good enough? It's about, I play guitar and I really just enjoy the hell out of it. In fact, my family does as well. So those are the five lessons that a baby taught me about guitar. Let me give you a quick recap again. I'll just do a very quick rundown. Patience, rest, consistency, dynamics, and joy. And of course, these lessons, uh, again, I stumbled into them in an unexpected way. And in the comments below, I want to know of a guitar lesson that you learned in an unexpected way. Maybe you were pumping gas and you had this light bulb moment about how chords connect. Maybe you were talking to a neighbor about weed whacking and all of a sudden they said something and something clicked on guitar with you. So let me know that unexpected guitar lesson that you experienced in the comments below. I cannot wait to hear from you. And while you're thinking of that, let me put this guitar down. This is the Santa Cruz Vintage Southerner, by the way. Uh, let me put this guitar down and we're gonna wander into the electric realm of my guitar snow. Yes, indeed, you all have been asking about it, so I figured it's time. I'm gonna crack open. It was just gonna be three guitars, but now it's gonna be four because, well, there's another one I think you should really know about. So let me put this guitar away and I'll get into some electric guitars. Look what I found! Put that away! Oh. Put it away! Hey, Arch, you gotta play! Come on! 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 Come on
on, Hutch. Hutch. Before we start talking about electric guitars, I do have to share with you an incredible mailbag arrival. About a month and a half ago, uh, six, I guess six to eight weeks ago, I ordered a Calton case for my Callings MF5 mandolin, and it arrived, and it is absolutely stunning. And I hope you can see this. I hope it doesn't glare up too bad because it is a smooth finished case. The first ever Callings case that I've ordered that has a smooth finish and it is fool's gold glitter. Check this out. Look at that, how incredible. It has this incredible iridescence quality to it that is like, uh, it has some green, some copper, some gold, some oranges. It's really a, a, an incredible case. Um, and of course it has everything that uh, Calton is, is known for between fit and finish, protection, durability, and of course, uh, visual panache. So I wanna thank the folks at Calton for the case. Um, after I put the order in, yeah, like I said, it was six to eight weeks and they even included a, a custom name badge for me, which I thought was pretty cool. The Tony's Acoustic Challenge name badge, which I wanted to share with you. Um, pretty awesome stuff. Again, huge thanks to the folks at Calton and I'm so happy that the mandolin that uh, really is my dream mandolin is finally getting the protection that it deserves. So that being said, let me go ahead and uh, start digging into, well, the electric guitars that I have in my collection. I was gonna share with you three. It's actually gonna be four because uh, there's a bass that I wanna share with you. It's electric, so I think it fits the category, but uh, let me go ahead and dig into those. First up on our electrical explorations is this Supro Westbury Deluxe, I believe. I bought this guitar simply because of the urging of my good friend Ross. Uh, Ross knows electric guitar inside and out. If I ever have a question about electric guitar, which oftentimes I do, because electric guitar really isn't my specialty per se, I immediately go to my buddy Ross and he steers me in the right direction. So he pointed me towards these Supro Westberries and I gotta say, this guitar sounds and plays incredible. I got it used for like 350 bucks and I've really just enjoyed the heck out of it. Let's check it out. <laughs> Next up is a guitar that I got from Dave's Guitar Shop in La Crosse, Wisconsin. In fact, I'm pretty sure Dave's has multiple locations in Wisconsin, and it is one hell of a shop. I got the guitar through Reverb, but they personally reached out to me to make sure that everything was okay with the order, and it just congratulate me on my new guitar. In addition to that, they said, hey, if you're ever in town, you gotta come to the store and check out Dave's personal collection. He's got a collection over I want to say over a hundred, but I'm pretty sure it's well over a hundred uh, vintage guitars that are pretty iconic and pretty historical. But nonetheless, this American uh, 1962 reissue Fender Jazzmaster with uh, matching headstock uh, came from Dave's in La Crosse, and I am so happy with it. I got this guitar because I was kind of going to, I wanted to capture the the later era John Fahey recordings when he kind of went electric and went experimental and he had I believe he played strats for the most part but the guitars that he used he always dialed in this very stringy tone this very articulate tone and this certainly does just that and I gotta be honest I'm a sucker for the color as well and I'm a sucker for the fact that it's an American reissue I couldn't ask for any more and this guitar certainly delivers when it comes to tone <laughs>
second to last on our electric journey is this Gibson Firebird Studio in white. Uh, an absolutely gorgeous guitar, and quick fanboy alert, I got this guitar solely because of Johnny Winter. Johnny Winter was my first guitar hero. I still love listening to Johnny Winter's albums. In fact, uh, oftentimes sit in my downstairs studio, throw on a Johnny Winter album, and play along with it on this very guitar. Yes, it's very fanboy, but you know what? It's really fun to have a guitar hero that you really look up to and you love the way they play. And uh, I do that with this very guitar. I don't like pretend I'm Johnny Winter. I don't wear like the, the capes and things like that, but it certainly, um, certainly channels that Johnny Winter vibe when I do pick it up. I enjoy the hell out of this guitar. I got this one used again uh, on reverb and uh, I'm so happy that I did. I love its offset design and it's, it's certainly an eye catcher. So let's give it a listen. <laughs> Last up on the electrical journey that we're on is this BC Rich Eagle bass from, I want to say late 70s, early 80s, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, this is an electric instrument that is near and dear to my heart. In fact, it's a family instrument. This was my dad's guitar, or my bass guitar, when he was with the band. You can see the headstock there, kind of the cool uh, old BC Rich logo inlaid, and then uh, I believe the body is koa with maple. I'm not entirely sure on that. It might be flame mahogany. I'm not, I'm not super sure, uh, but it looks rather koa-y. Anyways, I digress. Uh, this is the bass that he played with the band, and uh, my dad let me take it to the studio here to uh, mess with it and have some fun. So I do indeed have some fun with it. However, I do have to get a battery for it. So we're not going to hear it today um, because, well, it doesn't make any noise. I mean, I can play it acoustically but that doesn't really do anything. So uh, you can't really hear how it sounds plugged in yet, but but soon I gotta get a battery in it and then it'll be firing on all cylinders. But nonetheless, this is a, a, an electric instrument that is pretty darn awesome because it's got some uh, family story to it. So there you have it, my entire electric guitar arsenal. You've got the Supra Westbury, the Fender 62 reissue Jazzmaster, the Gibson Firebird Studio, and then of course this BC Rich Eagle Bass. Uh, so I want to thank everybody that asked me questions about whether or not I had an electric guitar and uh, You all asked plenty of times. So I finally caved and there it is. There's the electric guitar arsenal I have got to show you what a mess it is in my studio right now a couple episodes back I did the studio tour just to kind of show you what uh, what kind of things I surround myself with in my at-home guitar den and after busting out the electric guitars, by the way, it didn't take much convincing for me to get to talking about those. Um, after busting those out, you'll be amazed at how quickly this room turned into a complete disaster. It looks like a flea market here. In fact, I gotta be careful where I step. I'm just gonna do a quick little spin around. There's just stuff everywhere. You've got guitars everywhere on stools, uh, cases, pictures, you name it. Uh, things are everywhere. So yes. Uh, just a little bit of uh, behind the scenes. Uh, it's not always super clean in here. In fact, it's super clean in here maybe 20% of the time because oftentimes I'm just going from guitar to guitar with different ideas. Anyways, I just thought you might like that sneak peek into my messy guitar den. So that's a wrap for this episode of Acoustic Tuesday at Home. I want to thank you so much for joining me. And there's a couple of things that I want to ask of you. Actually, two specific things, maybe, maybe three. We'll start with two, and if I remember the third, we'll go there. Uh, first, if you're on Instagram, please follow tac.guitar, T-A-C dot guitar. I post on Instagram pretty frequently. You get some behind the scenes looks into my at home playing. I offer up some coaching tips, some playing tips, and just some overall fun guitar geek finds as well. Plus you'll be able to see some really cool Acoustic Tuesday viewer uh, submitted guitar snarls on there as well. So it's just a bunch of guitar geek fun over on Instagram. Again, follow me at tack. Dot guitar. The second thing, I want you to head over to AcousticTuesday.store. There you will find not one, not two, but three 
new guitar arsenal t-shirt designs. Yes, indeed, we had a little bit of a revamp. We've added some guitars, a couple new patterns, and I think you'll find those shirts pretty tantalizing to your guitar geek fashion taste. So again, that's at AcousticTuesday.store. And the third thing that I thought I was gonna remember but I'm not sure if I did. I do remember it. Oh yeah, new season of Acoustic Tuesday is coming. Yes, indeed, uh, probably towards the end of this month. In fact, it may very well be next episode. So since that's the case, let me go ahead and uh, give you a sneak peek into next week. Next week, whether I'm at home or in the studio, I'm not sure where yet, we'll see how this week goes, uh, we're gonna be talking about movies. Yes, feature films that feature none other than the acoustic guitar. I'm super excited to dig into that with you. Again, I wanna thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for being a guitar geek and remember, guitar geeks unite. You can catch the Acoustic Tuesday show every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit Acoustic Life. Yeah, AcousticLife.tv. I'm out of the studio, so I'm out of the rhythm. Yes, AcousticLife.tv. You can get uh, your Guitar Geek fix in between Tuesdays right there. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for being a Guitar Geek, and remember, Guitar Geeks Unite. Cheers. <laughs>